When it comes to The Witcher, especially season 3, a lot of criticisms I've seen focus on the subjective reasons that the show is bad. Deviation from the source material, problems with casting, that sort of thing. But what happens if you approach the show on its own terms? Well, it's still bad. So let's break down why the Battle of Aratusa utterly fails at being a compelling battle sequence, and because I prefer to promote positivity, why the Battle of Helm's Deep actually succeeds. Seeds. So it begins. Any battle sequence worth its salt needs to establish three main components in order to engage the audience. The first, and perhaps most important, is stakes. We need to know what's at stake, both physically and emotionally, in order to care about any of the actions we're about to witness. Unfortunately in this regard, the Battle of Aratusa was handicapped long before it ever began. In Netflix's interpretation of The Witcher, a lot of folks focus is put on the large-scale political conflict rather than the more personal character drama. This would be fine, except the politics and geography of the world the show takes place in is, let's just say, poorly established. Should have chosen a side, would you? The Redanian side. In Season 1, we establish that Sintra is in the south, and therefore is the most immediate enemy of Nilfgaard, whose armies are steadily pushing north. However, the strength, locations, and motivations of the other major kingdoms are either hardly explained or entirely omitted. They occasionally hint at answers to these questions through dialogue, but television, especially in the genre of fantasy, is a visual medium. Compare this to the world of Middle Earth. Peter Jackson's film adaptations do such a good job visually communicating important information. Need to know where things take place? Look how distinct each of the major locales are. You show me a single shot from any of the movies, and I know where the scene is taking place immediately. Where visuals can't communicate information, dialogue makes it obvious how each faction feels about the other. Orcs and Urukai hate humans. The age of men. Is over. Humans, elves, hobbits, and dwarves hate orcs. That's handsome orc. Hobbits just want to eat breakfast. What about second breakfast? Rohan resents Gondor for not providing direct aid. Where was Gondor when the Westfall fell? And Gondor is fighting for their lives while their leader eats tomatoes like a little freak. If all this can be established over the course of three admittedly hefty films, why then is it so difficult to do so over the course of three whole seasons of television? In The Witcher 3 Wild Hunt, there's an optional bit of dialogue where a Nilfgaardian will literally point to a map and explain the entire geopolitical situation as it currently stands. And it only takes two minutes to do so. But disregarding how poorly the stakes of the world are set up, what about the Battle of Aratusa specifically? Well, the episode begins exactly where the cliffhanger from part one of the season left off, Geralt held at knife point by Dijkstra. That's admittedly a cool setup, and it makes it feel like we're about to witness the Witcher's version of the Red Wedding. The Lannisters and the Rickards. Philippa even says that this is a purge right before cutting to the title card, but somehow this is as tense as the episode ever gets. You might be wondering why the wizards don't seem to put up a fight initially. Well, Philippa cast a powerful binding spell over all of Aratusa, which in theory creates a really interesting problem. How do mages fight back if they don't have access to magic? Maybe they'll have to rely on Geralt, you know, the main character of the series and one of maybe three people the audience actually cares about. No. Maybe this whole episode could be fantasy diehard, with Yen sneaking around, taking out Redanians, and ultimately freeing the mages being held hostage. Or maybe after introducing this binding spell out of nowhere, Taseo will just be like, You sure about that? And undo the binding spell with no effort and no interference by the many armed guards surrounding her that could attack her at any point before she finishes the counter spell. In one moment, the show does away with the thing we've been waiting to see since the first half of the season ended. But fret not, humble viewer, they're about to introduce a second problem that you won't care about. I have my own 
aims and they no longer include you. Vilgefortz breaks up with Tissaia and then opens a portal so that a bunch of elves can face off against the mages. But do you notice what's missing? Literally anyone we're emotionally invested in. So the big climactic battle of the episode takes place between some mages we hardly know and a bunch of elves that even the show forgets about 90% of the time. The Battle of Helm's Deep, by contrast, features three of the most beloved characters in the franchise. There's already a lot at stake, because if Saruman's forces wipe out Rohan, then Gondor will be the only kingdom of man left to fight the armies of Mordor. But the audience is most concerned with whether or not Aragorn, Gimli, and Legolas will survive the assault. While the sequence is beautifully constructed, if the main trio just dipped before the big battle, we wouldn't be emotionally invested. This is why every major battle in Lord of the Rings has at least one member of the Fellowship present. When the orcs break down the gates of Gondor, we're worried about the safety of Gandalf and Pippin. Characters are the soul of any story, and if you overlook them, your narrative is destined to fall apart. Speaking of stories, the second element every great battle needs is structure. Giving action sequences a distinct beginning, middle, and end provides them with a sense of progression. Audiences don't want to watch people locked in a perpetual stalemate. They want to see each side attack attack defend, retreat, and be forced to reevaluate their strategy. If the story of the battle isn't engaging, it doesn't matter how good the choreography is. In theory, you should be able to verbally describe the events of a battle and still keep your audience on the edge of their seat. So let's try doing that with the Battle of Aratuza. The elves show up doing their best Sith cosplay, prompting the mages to cast shield spells and strike their best Power Ranger pose. Unfortunately, the elves have anti-magic shield arrows. Tissaia tells the mages, The archers are the priority! Disarm and deflect! But then proceeds to do very little disarming and even less deflecting. However, she does hardcore Hadouken the elf lady's husband, which we'll discuss more in the next section because do I have a lot of thoughts about it. At this point in the battle, it's hard to tell who's winning or losing. I think they just didn't have the time or budget to actually create choreography for this sequence, so most of the fighting is just people in the background of shots using their imagination. Fringilla, who the show forgot about all season, shows up out of the blue and stabs one of the mages we don't remember. Oh, by the way, the elf lady has magic apparently. They might have set this up in the past seasons, but it's whatever, since the power levels and abilities of magic users in this show are just poorly established in general. Triss, a character we actually care about, finally shows up and promptly takes an arrow to the chest. Seriously, Tissaia, what happened to- Disarm and deflect! Yen shows up and asks the elf lady to stop, but she doesn't listen, so Stregobor comes in and saves the day with the power of prejudice. The mages leave while Stregobor prepares elven barbecue, and the elf lady escapes randomly off screen because this show hates you. So did that keep you on the edge of your seat? Did you feel like things progressed in a satisfying way? Did a producer really say that the reason the show is like this is because Americans are too dumb to understand geopolitics? Here's a hint. The answer to at least one of those questions is yes. The last element a good battle sequence needs is significance. But what exactly does that mean? Well, if stakes are what makes us care about how a battle ends, significance is what makes us care about a particular moment. As such, it relies much more on good editing, cinematography, and actor performance rather than just writing. Take for instance the first shot fired at the Battle of Helm's Deep. Out of context, it doesn't feel especially important, but that's why context matters. Throughout all the tense buildup preceding the actual battle, the film consistently cuts back to this guy right here. He doesn't even have a name as far as the movie is concerned, but the filmmaking repeatedly tells the audience, look at this guy, he's important. We see how nervous he looks waiting there atop the wall. We are shown just how shaky his hands are as he draws back his bow. And when he eventually looses an arrow prematurely, the audience gets to see how shocked he looks 
books. This buildup and payoff makes what could have been a throwaway moment feel significant and powerful. Compare this to Taseya when she hits the elf lady's husband with Harogan! After watching some unnamed mages get taken out by Nilfgaard, Taseya turns to stare down the elf lady who's just standing out in the open doing nothing. She then casts the turn your opponent into goop spell, which we won't ever see used again, despite clearly being very effective. Despite later showing us that she is in fact capable of casting a shield spell, Francesca does nothing, forcing her husband to jump in front of her before popping like a water balloon. What the f you see, this moment bothers me for a number of reasons. First of all, there's no setup. Taseya and the Elf Lady don't have a previously established rivalry, and it's not like Francesca is shown taking out anyone Taseya cares about until after the Hadouken incident. Secondly, the way the moment is shot makes absolutely no sense. This should feel impactful, but the cinematography and editing does not set up what's about to happen. How does he know that this spell is the least? lethal kind and not the harmless force push kind. If it's so obvious, why doesn't Francesca look worried in this shot? And how come she can't just jump out of the way? The lack of any narrative or emotional significance unfortunately extends beyond the main battle as well. Villains like Rienz and Lydia were built up over multiple seasons, and then dispatched offhandedly in this episode without even putting up a fight. Even if we overlook how powerful they were supposed to be, at least give them a good monologue before the heroes defeat them. Unceremoniously eliminating a villain can be a really powerful moment, showing that even a big bad evil guy can be taken out by something as simple as a dagger reminds the audience just how fragile we all are. But this episode also has some of the most egregious instances of plot armor in the whole show, so the way Rience and Lydia go out just feels wild unfulfilling. If the character is significant, so too should be their end. The Battle of Aratusa fails to establish the three major elements that must be present in a good fight sequence. So while I truly wish we got a better episode, I at least hope it taught you how not to do a fantasy battle. If you want to know why The Witcher feels pretentious, click here and hit the notification bell so I don't slowly disappear into the void. I'm Dylan, and this has been The Writer's Block.